JWT stands for JSON Web Tokens. It's a very popular way to do user authorization in web apps today. JWT has also become very popular in the context of microservices and as a result of some of the other developments in the way we build web applications today. In this tutorial, we will learn what JWT is and how exactly it's used, specifically in the context of securing web applications. JWT is usually pronounced as JAT, by the way. Think of it as adding an extra A in there, J-A-W-T, JAT. But I found it to be a little polarizing among the community. So for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just calling it JWT, okay? All right, so although JWT is commonly used for managing authorization, the idea behind JWT is to create a standard way for two parties to communicate securely. So there's this open industry standard specification called the RFC 7519, which outlines how a JWT should be structured and how to use it for exchanging information or claims as it's usually called. But since JWT is so widely used for authorization, let's focus our attention in this tutorial to just that. So when it comes to authorization, in addition to JWT, there are a bunch more options, including session tokens. All these authorization mechanisms, session token-based authorization or JWT-based authorization or any other mechanism we'll think of in the future, they all have one thing to blame, and that is HTTP. You see, HTTP is a stateless protocol. What it means is that every interaction in HTTP needs to contain all the information needed for that interaction. Nothing is remembered from before. No state is maintained over like multiple requests. Think about this. When you're accessing a page from a server, what's the information you need to send it? Well, if it's a simple static HTML page, you don't need much. You just need to send the URL of the page that you're looking for. And the server sends you back the page. You need another page, send another URL, the server sends back that page. So technically, the server doesn't need to remember your previous requests in this case. Each request is kind of self-contained, so it's perfect for HTTP protocol. So if the server application is static and available to everyone, there's no problem, okay? The problem is when the response from the server is dynamic and it depends on who the user is. In this case, the information you send to the server is not just what page you want, you obviously also need to tell the server who you are. So when you have a server application with pages P1 and P2 that are accessible only by certain users, you tell the server over HTTP, hey, I'm user A and I'd like page P1. The server goes, okay, here's page P1. But then after that, let's say you want one more page. If you go, hey, thanks server, can I also get P2? Well, that's actually not gonna work. The server has no idea who you are this time because it doesn't remember what your previous request is. In every interaction, you have to provide all the details and all the information required for that interaction. So you'll again need to say, hey, server, I'm user A and add like page P2. And now the server knows what to do because all the information that the server needs to do the job is in that request. No dependence on previous information. Now you might say, hang on, that's not been my experience with web apps. For example, you can log into a banking website with your user ID and password and the website says, okay, authenticated. And when you go to the accounts page, the website doesn't ask you, wait, who are you again? It doesn't do that. The website knows who you are. It remembers you until you log off right? How does it do that? How does that happen? There are multiple ways in which web applications manage and remember sessions. And two of the popular ways it's done is using something called tokens. The two popular options are using session tokens and using JSON web tokens or JWT. Let's understand them both so that you really understand what JWT is all about. Let me give you an analogy. Let's say a customer has a support request with a customer care department, right? A support department. He calls them up and he tells them what his uh, issues are. And the representative tries out some troubleshooting steps and when nothing works, the representative says, okay, well, let me transfer this to some other department and they can help. Please call back tomorrow. This support representative makes a note of all the details, including all the troubleshooting steps they've tried and they save it in the system and they give the customer a support ticket. This ticket number is associated with all the details that the supporter has uh, saved in the system. So the next time the customer calls back, the customer doesn't have to go through all the details again, all the same steps again. When he calls again, what does he do? 
he gives the same ticket number, the new support representative, or maybe the same support rep who doesn't remember the previous conversation, they look up the ticket number and get all the details they've saved in the system. This is kind of what's happening with authentication using session tokens. When you authenticate, the server creates a session and keeps track of it itself. It creates a session ID to associate with that session and it gives that ID to you. It's just like the support ticket in the example we just saw. So subsequently, the client passes this token to the server as a part of every request. And the server looks it up and it identifies who the client is. So the server typically has to serve multiple clients at the same time. So having this client pass the session ID makes it, makes it handy. The server always knows who the client is and can look up the information based on this single token. Now, how the client passes the session ID to the server really depends on the implementation. But the most common approach is to save the session ID in a cookie so that it automatically gets added to the cookie header on every subsequent request. Okay, authentication happens, the server saves the state and returns a response for the cookie. Subsequent requests from the browser automatically have the cookie in the header because that's what browsers do. So the server has that information and it can look it up again to identify the client. This mechanism of saving session IDs as tokens saved in cookies has been working fine for quite a while now. And again, like I said, this is probably the most popular mechanism for authorization for the most part. There are a few problems with this approach though, and that's where JWT comes in. Let's understand what those problems are. The biggest problem is that this approach assumes something. What does it assume? It assumes that there's always just one monolithic server web application. That used to be the case typically in the past, but that's no longer the case these days. Modern web apps, most modern web apps these days don't look like this. They look like this. You have multiple servers sharing the load that sit behind a load balancer. When a request comes in, the load balancer decides which server to route the request to. So here's the problem. The server could have their login request routed to server one, and uh, this session is in the memory of server one. The next request goes through the load balancer and it goes to server two. Now server two has no idea about this previous exchange since only server one can recognize and look up that session ID token. Okay, so, well, the solution is obvious. You introduce a shared session cache that all these servers save sessions to and they look up session tokens from. This is a typical use case for like a Redis cache sitting over here for this very reason. The drawback of this is that there is one single point of failure now. If this Redis instance goes down, all the sessions are down, which is why more, some implementations don't do this. What they do instead is they follow the sticky session pattern. So basically the load balancer remembers which server has the given user session and it always redirects requests from that user to that specific server. But yeah, this isn't that scalable. Also imagine in the case of microservices where there are multiple servers working with each other. How does session information get carried over between all these different microservice instances? This is tricky. Okay, now let's propose an alternative model. You remember the customer service analogy that I told you? Let's say the service folks don't maintain state this time, all right? So let's say imagine there's no database, there's no internet, there's no phone. Let's say the customer has to walk up to the service department and the agent asks him what's wrong and he tells them. The service guy says, okay, we'll work on it. Come back again tomorrow. But imagine that you are the service rep and you don't want this customer to repeat his full story to some other rep when he comes in tomorrow, all right? So what can you do to make this easy for the customer? You don't have any store. You don't have anything to save this interaction at your end and uh, give him a case ID or a token, all right? So what do you do? All right, so here's an idea. Instead of registering the case in the system and giving the customer the case number, which you cannot do in this case, what you do is you write down all the details of the interaction on a piece of paper and hand it to the customer and say, okay, bring this back with you the next time you're here and hand it to the customer rep that you talk to. They can read this and understand and get all the details. Okay, so this is a change from the previous model. The customer rep isn't giving the customer a token ID that refers to the details. The customer rep is giving the customer the details itself. Now, if this were to happen, does the customer rep have to remember anything? 
Well, no, it's the customer's responsibility to get that piece of paper for every subsequent interaction with that support department. The support department doesn't have to remember anything, which is good, but there's a drawback with this approach. So let's say the customer brings in a piece of paper with a history of issues. How does the support rep trust it? There might be a malicious customer who takes a piece of paper and writes a complete history of bad customer service and goes to demand for a freebie as a result of being treated badly. You know what I mean? It's, uh, it's hard. You need to make the record of history trustworthy. Well, one solution is to sign the piece of paper that you give to the customer, right? If the support rep can securely sign the information state that's handed to the customer, the next time the customer gets it, the new support rep can verify the signature to ensure that it's valid. This switched model is what's employed in the JWT mechanism. Imagine when the client authenticates, instead of the server saving that user information in a state on the server and returning the ID as a token, it returns the user information itself as a token, right? Imagine a JSON payload being returned with the user information back. Every time the client makes a subsequent request, the client sends the whole JSON token with the request, saying, this is who I am, this is my ID, and this is my name. The server isn't saving anything. Every time a request comes in, the server goes, okay, let's see who this is. Hmm, this JWT says this username is Foo, and they have successfully authenticated. Okay, boys, let him in. Okay, this token is not an ID here. It's a JSON object which has all the information. This, my friends, is what's called, drumroll, JSON Web Tokens. JSON tokens exchange over the web, JWT. And of course, the problem of security is handled here by signing the tokens that's handed across each time. When a user authenticates, the server just doesn't send any JSON object, it sends something in a special signed format. There's a signature here. So when the client sends a subsequent request, the signed JWT is sent back to the server. The server verifies the signature and it trusts it only if it's valid. And when it's valid, all the information that the server needs is right there in the token. This is really all that JWT is. It's a way for a client and a server to communicate and share information directly that has some meaning across multiple interactions without the server having to remember information for each client. The fact that this happens to be between a client and a server and for authorization purposes is really incidental. It could technically be used for anything. Like for example, you can pretty much hand out party invitations in JWT format and then verify the JWT signature at the entrance of your party to make sure only the people you've invited have shown up. Don't do that though. Let's stick to authorization for JWT now. So in the context of authorization, if you were to contrast session IDs and JWTs, Think of session ID tokens as a reference token, right? It's a reference to a state. JWTs are value tokens. It contains the value. Session ID tokens refer to a state on the server. JWTs contain the value itself. Notice that all along we've been talking about JWT as in what the token is and not how it's sent. Just like session IDs can be sent using cookies, well, JWT can be sent using cookies too. You wanna save that in local storage on the browser and send it? Well, you can do that too. JWTs or session tokens are just different options for what is exchanged. How you exchange them, it's really up to you. Okay, now what does this JWT look like? Isn't it kind of painful to have to send a JSON object extra in every request that you make? Well, it actually doesn't look like a JSON object. If you were to take a JWT, it kind of looks something like this doesn't look like JSON, does it? There's actually a structure and a process of creating a JWT. And in fact, there is a way you can take this token on your screen right now and figure out what the JSON payload is. Now, how does this all work? Well, check out this next tutorial where I break down the structure of JWT and I'll tell you how to parse a JWT as well as how to create new JWTs yourself. We'll also be looking at some disadvantages of JWT when compared to session IDs in the context of authorization. Check that out and I'll see you there.